Imagine a fighter that combines a design proven over 50 years of service and a speed of up to Mach 3 with the latest software and weapons. However, there's no need to dream because it's already here. Today we'll be talking about the F-15 EX Eagle II, which received new life thanks to the Boeing team. When the American military acquired heat-seeking air-to-air missiles, they decided that machine guns on fighter jets were terribly outdated. Therefore, the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom didn't have weapons suitable for close-range air combat, which led to losses in the face of the more nimble MiG-21 in the skies of Vietnam. Military leaders quickly reconsidered their priorities for the future fighter, giving preference to speed, a powerful long-range radar, a huge supply of air-to-air -air missiles, and of course a weapon used for close combat. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara asked the U.S. Air Force and Navy to join forces to create an ultimate aircraft that could be used without much modification. The service's request, in turn, was responded to by Fairchild Republic, North American Aviation, and McDonnell Douglas. But the most unexpected participant in the project, even for aircraft manufacturers, was NASA. Yes, as you already understood, the U.S. authorities were serious about overtaking their main strategic enemy, the USSR, for years to come. Having won the competitive selection, McDonnell Douglas began polishing the prototype, which at that time resembled a twin-tailed F-14 Tomcat with fixed wings. The result of the efforts was the single-seat F-15 and the two-seat TF-15, which would later be renamed the F-15A and F-15B. The versions received new Pratt & Whitney F-100 engines, and instead of the initially proposed 25mm Ford Philco GAU-7 cannon with caseless ammunition, the fighter, being faced with development problems, received the legendary M61 Vulcan, just like the A-10 Warthog. The F-15A took off on its first flight in July of 1972, and a year later its iron brother, the two-seat F-15B, spread its wings. Progress was being made, and Eagle tried its best to stay ahead of it. In 1979, McDonnell Douglas and F-15 radar manufacturer Hughes teamed up to privately develop a strike version of the fighter called the F-15E Strike Eagle. It was this that became the starting point in the history of the F-15 Advanced Eagle family, and in particular the F-15 EX Eagle II. In the early 2010s, the U.S. Air Force realized an alarmingly looming shortage of its fighter fleet by the 2020s due to delayed or scaled-back modernization plans for existing fighters due to severe budget cuts after the end of the Cold War. The same plans to order 381 production F-22 Raptors in the early 2000s had sharply lost to 187 by 2009. By the mid-2010s, the F-15CD fleet had become obsolete and beyond economic sustainability, and the F-35 Lightning II program was facing delays, leading to the need to recapitalize the fighter shortage as the classic F-15s were due to retire by mid-2020s. Meanwhile, Boeing was hard at work upgrading the F-15E for export customers, resulting in the F-15 Advanced Eagle, a series of advanced fighter aircraft, of which the F-15SA, or Saudi Advanced, was the first representative. It was soon joined by a second iteration, the F-15QA, or Qatar Advanced, ordered by Qatar in 2017. In 2018, a series of OSD CAPE studies proved that a combination of fourth and fifth generations could help the U.S. Air Force make recapitalizing its fleet less painful for taxpayers. The services discussed with Boeing the F-15X, or Advanced F-15, a single-seat variant based on the F-15QA to replace the Air Force's current F-15C and F-15D, to which the experts proposed a single-seat F-15CX and a double-seat F-15EX with identical capabilities. The Air Force preferred the latter since at that time only two-seat F-15 models remained in production. This meant that the existing F-15 production line could be used with minimal one-time startup costs to quickly bring additional fighters into service. The first planned improvements to the F-15EX included ACER radar, Erst infrared search and track, and EPAWS Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System from existing F-15 modernization programs, while combining the advantages of the F-15QA such as a revised design with a service life of 20,000 hours, a new cockpit, flight controls, and an advanced AMBER Advanced Missile and Bomb Ejector Rack System capable of carrying up to 22 air-to-air -air missiles. 
And although all these chips would still not allow the Eagle II to withstand the latest air defense systems with the same effectiveness as the representatives of the fifth generation Raptor and Lightning II, the F-15 EX fighters could still provide excellent help for the latter in air superiority missions by performing homeland and air base defense, enforcing no-fly zones against limited air defenses, and deploying outsized standoff weapons in support of stealth fighters at the front line. In July of 2020, the U.S. Department of Defense placed an order for the first eight F-15EX worth $1.2 billion, and the aircraft received the name Eagle II in April of 2021. That same year, the purchase of 12 more such fighters was financed, bringing their total planned fleet to 104 units, which the service wanted to operate at least until the 2040s. The EX modification takes the best from previous Eagle incarnations, the engine was replaced with a General Electric F-110 GE-129 with a maximum thrust of 29,500 IBF, 131 KN, complementing it with much more advanced AN-ALQ-239 Digital Electronic Warfare System DUES, to replace the previous AN-ALQ-128 Electronic Warfare Warning Set OOS, which was part of Tactical Electronic Warfare Systems DUES. The appearance of the Eagle also underwent changes. Engineers reviewed the design of the wings and greatly improved it, increasing the service life of the device from 8,000 to 20,000 hours. Additionally, there was a place for those innovations that were previously proposed for export but never found a response from customers. For example, an improved cabin, which was originally intended to be installed in the F-15 SE Silent Eagle modifications, the hybrid electronic mechanical control system has been replaced by a more modern digital fly-by-wire control system, which has successfully eliminated the flutter modes that previously caused fighter stability problems that caused earlier versions of the F-15 to disable two outboard wing pylons. It'd be strange if, in pursuit of efficiency, the Boeing team worked on the appearance and engines of the aircraft, completely forgetting about the digital guts of the EX. Therefore, it received a new mission computer Advanced Display Core Processor 2 ADCP2, large aviation displays LAD for the pilot, and Weapon Systems Officer WSO. An equally important role in the update was played by the new ASA Radar ANAPG82V1 from Raytheon, which combines the ASA APG63V3 antenna with the APG79V processor. And to prevent all these goods from overheating and malfunctioning, the fighter received a new cooling system and radio frequency tunable filters RFTF, ensuring simultaneous operation of radar and electronic warfare when integrated with the ANALQ-250 EPAWS Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability Complex System. The Eagle II's large lifting capacity gave it an appropriate level of flexibility, while a typical advanced Eagle configuration could carry 12 air-to-air -air missiles including short-range AIM-120 AMRAAM or AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, as well as AGM-88 HARM, the F-15EX can be armed with 16 AIM-120, 4 AIM-9, and 2 AGM-88 HARM. For precision striking, it's capable of carrying 16 GBU-39 Small Diameter Bombs SDB, 4 AMRAAMs, 1 2,000-pound Joint Direct Attack Munition JDAM, 2 HARMs, and 2 fuel tanks. And to provide the additional firepower for the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, the F-15EX can be equipped with several large munitions like the AGM-158 Jassum or the smaller AGM-183 Arrow. The first Eagle II was delivered to Eglin Air Force Base in Florida in March 2021, subsequently forming a test group from the first six fighters to support development and operational flight testing. The pilots were shocked to learn how much ammunition this thing could carry, Having about 100 such fighters in reserve, the U.S. Air Force will form not only good support for its advanced stealth F-35s, but also fill in where you might not have as many bombers as you'd like to have. You think there's room in the U.S. Air Force fleet for the new Eagles against the backdrop of the rapidly approaching 6th generation NGAD fighters? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.